Okay, in this video, we are doing Calc A, B, problem set 63. Uh, problems and playlists in the description below. Let's do the problems. Let f be the function given by f of x equals 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 over 2x squared minus 5x plus 2. For what value of x uh, does f of x have a removable discontinuity? So you got to know removable, jump, and infinite discontinuities. Infinite discontinuities are just vertical asymptotes. Um, jump discontinuities, you pretty much... You're only really going to run into with like piecewise functions, um, and then removable is a factor of the denominator that cancels with a factor of the numerator. So that's what we're looking for here, which means we got to factor this thing. So uh, I'm going to start off with f of x. Factor of the numerator, I would do like 2x and a space and then x and a space. Then you got to look at it and be like, what uh, multiplies to, uh, what am I doing? I just, well, I need things to multiply to negative three, and then I need like my middle term to add up to five. I'm very bad at explaining factoring, it turns out. Um, I'm gonna go with two uh, x minus one and then x plus three, because if we do that, the middle term works out. So plus three minus one, uh, we gotta do the same sort of thing on the bottom. So again, it's gonna be two x and then x. Now we need things that multiply to positive two and will give us um, negative five in the middle. So I'm gonna go two x minus one and x minus two. Also, keep in mind, you're looking for a removal discontinuity. I mean, the answer could be there are none. But at this point, because it's not possible to get an x plus 3 in the denominator, you got to be thinking, like, there's probably a 2x minus 1. Otherwise, there wouldn't be removal discontinuity. So I'm going to go with uh, my x minus 2 and 2x minus 1. Okay, so removal discontinuity is a factor of the denominator that cancels with the numerator. And you can see 2x minus 1 does, which means we have a removal discontinuity. Um, we have a removal discontinuity at x equals 1 half. I just wanted to address the fact there is a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. It's not the question here. Um, but if the problem had said, like, how many vertical asymptotes or list the vertical asymptotes, x equals 2 would be the only answer. x equals 1 half is not a vertical asymptote. It's only a removable discontinuity. All right, next up. Given the integral from 0 to 5 of f of x dx is 6, the integral from 3 to 5 of f of x dx is 4, find the integral from 0 to 3 of f of x dx. So this is like an intro starter problem on this concept um, so it's not meant to like, you know, be super tough. Um, the integral from zero to five could be the integral from zero to one plus the integral from one to five, or you go zero to one, one to two, and then two to five. You can break it up however you want as long as the bounds take you from zero to five. So in our particular case, what I'm thinking is zero to five is equal to zero to three plus three to five. And at this point, it's actually just an equation. We know two of the values and one of them is our unknown. So we know six, we know this is our unknown. And then uh, we know the last bit there is four. And then all we have to do is, uh, you know, solve for the unknown. So our answer is going to be that the integral from zero to three of f of x dx is equal to two. Get used to it. Um, we're going to see more interesting problems as we uh, learn more and, and do uh, more challenging things. But you do run into that type of problem. So, you know, just do what you know how to do. All right, next question. Evaluate the integral from one to five of the absolute value of x minus four dx. So what we're going to start running into is we know a lot of different ways uh, to think about uh, integrals and you know definite integrals, and we're sort of doing antiderivatives a little bit. Um, we know uh, multiple ways of doing this. This one, the right way, or the best way to do, I guess, is to always do this graphically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at 1, 5, and then the vertex of that absolute value graph, which is at 4. So 1, 5, and 4 are the only points I really care about. So we put them down. We put them in order. If you plug in 1, you get... Uh, 1 minus 4 is negative 3, but absolute value is positive 3. If you plug in 4, you definitely just get 0. Um, and if you plug in 5, you get 5 minus 4 is 1, uh, and the absolute value is still 1. So we get this. And then what we're going to do is connect them, because we're basically just graphing the function. And then we'll do this graphically. So I see two different triangles. The area of um, each of them is 1 half and then 3 times 3 for the bigger one, plus 1 half and then 1 times 1 for the smaller one. So that's going to give us 4.5 plus 0.5. It's going to give us 5 overall, which is the value of the definite integral. So it didn't say to use a graph. That doesn't mean you can't use a graph. In fact, that's the only way I would really consider doing that particular problem. So keep that in mind, always in the back of your head. Next problem. Evaluate from 2 to 4 of the quantity 4x minus 1. All right, so we just did one graphically, so maybe I'm just in that frame of mind. I'm definitely doing this graphically because I definitely know what 4x minus 1 looks like. And I can use that to kind of figure out the region. So I'm going to have to plug in uh, 2 and 4 because those are the bounds. Now at, one, at x equals 1 fourth uh, is where the linear function 4x minus 1 crosses the x-axis. 
We don't really care about that because it's not between two and four. So we're just ignoring it for these purposes. If I plug in two, I get eight minus one, which is seven. If I plug in four, I get 16 minus one, which is 15. And so in this case, I'm actually just getting a trapezoid. And I'm gonna find the area of a trapezoid. It's one half the height times the sum of the bases. So it's gonna be one half, the height is two because trapezoids in calculus, generally speaking, are like sitting on their heights. They're kind of like sideways, it's like they fell down. Um, so sitting on their heights, so one half of two and then seven plus 15, which just gives me uh, 22 as my answer. And remember that's the answer to the integral. So I don't know, go back up and say it or rewrite it with that, whatever you wanna do. Anyway, that's the entire problem set. Uh, I hope this was helpful and good luck.